My name is Eric Chesser, and welcome to Shed Tour, a video series dedicated to getting outdoors, spending time with old friends, making new ones, but more than anything, searching for these things, shed antlers. I started shed hunting as a teenager over 25 years ago. It's my favorite thing to do outdoors, and still to this day, I'm just oh, as excited to find guys. an antler as I, I was back then. I literally had a heart attack. Like, I'm in shock. We're finding Sit an Sit back match, and enjoy another episode of the Shed Tour. Made it, made it, made it. Whoo, sweaty. Welcome back to another episode of Shed Tour, guys. I think we're on episode six, if I had to guess. Um, and I think we're also done with the giveaway. So thanks to those who entered the giveaway. Maybe we've even announced the winner by now. I'm not sure, because we're kind of filming this before, but we just made a big push into some new country and got Braden behind the camera. We're both pretty excited because this is kind of an unknown area to us. We've never hit these canyons. It's a whole new zone. So we just climbed up into here, which typically we drop down into some country and we're going away. We're actually climbing in, starting camp here, and then continue to go up these canyons and, and hit these south slopes. So 3.66 miles in, in an hour and 45 minutes, and we have enough food and, and we got plenty of water because we're at the creek, but we got enough food for three nights and, you know, two, three-ish days, counting the day in and the day out, but two full days in here. So I'm packing light. It didn't call for any rain, so I've got a hammock. I think I'm just gonna unload the pack right here. We're gonna go pound some new country, guys, and I'm so excited because we're either gonna get our butts kicked or we're coming out of here heavy. It really can go either way. We're taking a risk, but we studied Onyx. We think we found a good zone, so let's go find out. All right, first thing, most important thing for me on this trip, a true full-size at-home memory foam pillow, my favorite pillow. I've uh, had some issues with my neck, a herniated disc between C6 and 7. I was probably complaining about it in the Shed Tour videos, but I got a steroid injection in the spine, so hopefully that's good. This has got all the batteries, uh, charging cables, charging pack, headlamp, etc. Toiletry bag, food bag, some extra clothing, which is not much, and then the sleeping bag. A hammock, hammock system, and a sleeping pad. I could either use this pad in the hammock or just sleep right here in the dirt. I haven't done the hammock for a while, so I didn't want to commit to it 100%. That's all I have in the bag. I've got water, extra batteries, some mountain ops, my pistol. And here I've got some uh, wet wipes, leather gloves, some actually some workout bands. I'll show you guys. I got to do a lot of rotator cuff movements, shoulder movements, some... Uh, movements like this and then neck flossing it's called so trying to stretch that nerve get that nerve to kind of like try to basically free itself i got a pinch nerve on my left side so that's it braden has got about the same so we're just going to get ready for a day hike I, I would assume we have six or seven hours until dark and the plan is that we split ways and today is today is not going to be a lot of zigzagging unless one of us hits a pocket today is like get out there, do loops through canyons and draws, come back tonight and with that information, hopefully we have a pile of sheds, but at least with that information, we'll kind of know some areas to maybe focus on the next couple days and we'll know some areas to avoid. Pretty sweet looking coos. <laughs> That's really cool actually. Just like a big old, yeah, that stupid thing won't focus. Just a big old eye guard on that little thing. Here we go guys, getting our Line started and trying out some new country and just to give you an idea of what I'm working with and my game plan is we got this big canyon. We're camped at the bottom by the creek. I'm kind of on a north facing slope that you know most likely could have had snow back then when they shed. And then I am using my elevation and vantage to glass across the canyon and keep an eye on the south facing slope. And I'd say just barely I started getting into sign that got me feeling pretty good. A lot of elk droppings, a lot of elk tracks that are old. You know, at this point, it's well over a month that they've shed. And you're trying to find the tracks and beds that 
our month old and droppings that are month old. So that's kind of what we're keeping our eye out for. The later it gets, the harder it gets to kind of pinpoint exactly where they were during those uh, shedding weeks. So that's what we're working with. We got a little rub up here. Looks like a deer rub, pretty small, but with a little bit of luck, I'd say within the next hour, you know, maybe we can get on the board for the first shed, but so far nothing for me. It's not what we're looking for, but a little shed here. That looks like a mule deer. Huh. What tracks are these? Oak tracks. Well, still no elk sheds and sign. Still seeing tracks that were in the mud. Just using onyx to drop pins even where the most sign is. Just in case I want to come back here and do a little more gridding and do more lines. But so far, nothing that's really got me too excited and got me to thinking I should drop the pack and do some work. So slow and steady for me today. Just trying to find something. Would love to pop off a brown and get motivated enough to drop the pack and do some work and with all the sign in here you think that could happen any minute now i just barely put my camera down grabbed the pack was kind of glass in his face and already told you the plan and i looked down and i don't know what this is holy crap it looks a lot bigger than i thought it was See that tine right there? Okay, that is that looks like a big horn. So far, it looks like a good fixer at least. Dang. That feels good. Ow, I just sat right on a rock, dude. Oh, it's a set. No freaking way. Holy crap. Yes. I wanted a nice set, and there's just freaking two of them right there, and they're studs. Oh my heck, no freaking way. So that's the one I saw was right there. And it's just a side-by-side. -side. They're pretty dang old, but they're honestly really old. Dang, that feels good. Yeah, this is one of those old beasts that we were looking for. This stuff sucks. But what's going on with that one? Yeah, for sure set. Too bad he's pretty dang old. I don't even remember which one I saw first. I think it was, I don't remember, but we got us a set, first elk set of the trip. Dang, these things are really old. Oh, what the heck? Like so old actually. And there's this one. I honestly don't even know if that's a set. Is it? This one looks so much bigger. Like, look at that one. Yeah, it probably is. Dang, these things are like nasty. I don't even know if that's a set or not. What do you guys think? Do you think that's a set? That's so confusing. That's really confusing me. Like, it's like the whole... I am so confused. But look at that horn. That's like a freaking big, big old chalker. Like 350 type bull. And this one seems like the match, but it's almost like really smaller. And like, kind of different fronts. I'm so confused. Hoo hoo! Yeah! I needed that! I was right here, right where I'm standing. God, now I'm just looking all over. And I was looking down, I'm like, oh, that looks pretty good, like a little pine tree bench. But I'm like, oh, I probably wouldn't have had a lot of snow there. I don't know if they would have loved that. And I was just walking through this oak brush, coming right through here. And I looked up and something caught my eye and I had to back step. And I was like, what was that? Like, and I looked up there and I was like, huh, there's kind of another one behind it. I thought they were like cattails. I don't know why. I thought it was like a cattail looking weed. And then it hit me like, that's a royal. 
And that's a G1, and that's a freaking brown elk shed. It's tough to see, I'll zoom in for you guys. It's right above me, only like 15 yards. Check that out. You can see the G1 and then the Royal. But yeah, that was a tough spot. I, I could have easily walked by that. The pickup on the first brown of this beast of a trip. Just getting started. Starting it off right with a really pretty, pretty six point brown. Guys, I could have so easily walked by this and I'm sure I've walked by plenty. All I caught was four or five inches of the G1 that caught my eye. It made me kind of back pedal. And then I saw this and was kind of like, oh, two weeds, two of the same like bulb. They just look like cattails, like a weed bulb or something. That's all my, my mind was seeing. And it just kind of dawned on, like it took me a second guys, I'll be honest. It took me a second then it dawned on me like, that's a shed. <laughs> that's a first and a royal. And I could see that this royal kind of had a acorn little knob on the top here, but it's a pretty bull. It's not a big giant burr, but it's a really pretty dark chocolate six point. And I couldn't be happier for the first six point of the trip, the first brown. Throwing this one on the pack, taking it back. I did not keep that mule deer shed, so this is shed one that I'm counting. And I think I'm just going to ditch the pack and take the water bottle around here and do some quick lines, see if we can't match it up. Great fronts on this bull, guys. Those ones and twos, man, they're sweet. But yeah, he's not super big here, but he is a pretty, pretty bull. And uh, we'll take that one. That's gonna be pretty strong, but I'm gonna finish this. I did a couple lines above me with no luck. So I'm actually gonna do some lines below me and down to the creek, cause I need water. It's uh, hot enough out here. This is not one of those trips you wanna go without water. And as I get over to the other side, there's, I'm not gonna be anywhere near a creek, so. I still have a chance to match this thing up below me. There's some little like pine tree benches, so we'll go give it a try. Working the same ridge. And I was glassing across, glassing for sheds of course. I saw a bear, but that was kind of cool. He wasn't a giant bear, but um, after I got done looking at him, which I couldn't get very good footage of him, I don't have any digiscoping set up with me. Walked just about 10 yards and found that guy. So we're on the board with a white. A few years old. May not be a keeper. Let's check it out. Hmm. Yeah, it could be three years old. You know what, there's another one, literally right over there that I spotted too, I can see it with my eyes. Looks like it's a match. Yeah, this one's been in the sun more and it's dried up. I don't know, what do you guys think? I mean, that's, that one's just dirty. This one still has some density to it, but yeah. I think I'll take this one, but not this one. Adios. Well, guys, I just uh, hit one of my goals, and that's, I hit two of my goals. Glass and an antler, and a side-by-side -side set. I just glassed up both sides of a nice set. They're white. Hopefully they're not super chalked out. I'm going to try to get a better angle of them and sit down and uh, try to figure out what this is. They're nice antlers, good size. They're on the other side of the canyon and I was just about to the top of this one to go up and over and then use the next creek bottom to head back to camp, which if I change my mind, I could go down to that creek bottom, grab that set, and then use that creek to kind of get me back to camp. So let me find a spot to sit down. I figured I would find a antler over there. So I was glassing all these little cuts and as I get more elevation, I can start seeing back into the other side and these things are just right down in the bottom. Glassed a bear over there. I was just looking down the bottom and a big old bruiser is right down here. 
just out of the creek, so I'm gonna try to see if I can get get uh, down there and get a closer look at him. The thing was big. He's right here. That was freaking sweet. Oh my gosh, can you imagine if I had a tag and a bow? This is what I love about shed hunting. Just, it gets me out here, guys. It gets me out here. You never know what you're gonna find. You never know what you're gonna see. You never know what you're gonna experience. Shed hunting has got me to some of the coolest country. I've had some of the coolest things happen to me while I'm shed hunting. That ranks high. Whew, I just got the chills. I just got the flush of the chills. I saw that thing right here in the creek bed coming down that steep sunny ridge right there. And I figured I can get close if I just played it sneaky. And I was pretty dang sneaky, but the wind was kind of switching in the creek bed. And you guys saw what happened when he smelled me. Uh, lost interest and just kind of trotted down canyon the funny thing is there's a second bear up here right there where I got to go get the elk antlers but that was fun don't regret it at all I did have my pistol and uh, I loaded one in there before I came down to the creek but clearly never felt threatened just a cool experience Well, I made it back to camp. Got two sheds and a coo shed, as you saw. Eric's not back yet, so I'm gonna try to make a fire pit somewhere in here. I'm not too sure where, it's kind of grassy. But maybe I can make it just up on the hill a little ways and start putting camp together and then just wait for Eric and do a little show and tell. That's honestly some of the best parts of shed hunting is doing show and tell. That's how you make the perfect fire pit. I mean, look at that. We did it. That's a sweet brown, dude. We figured, dang. Some country out, we learned a lot today. She got me a brown. That's a sweet brown, dude. It's pretty. Dang. Yeah. Big old fronts, man. He's got like a cool look. I know, he's got like really weird banana sword looking things. Dude, antlers this year are dense. Like, they are solid. They must have had good moisture, nice healthy crop Dang. to get them really strong, dense antler. Like it weighs a lot, especially the front with all those extras. 
extra inches on the front tines, but pretty bull. I'm stoked. Got it done on day one. Looks like big tine got a set. So I found old. a set that was old like that. I just left it. I went over there thinking I'm going to take them regardless, but I just left them. So guys, it's day one. Probably a little more than half day, but just takes you a long time to get to learn the new country and kind of figure out the track. So I'm proud to have found a brown. Yeah, dude. I think uh, that tells us a little. I found this guy and his match. This one had some density to some of this horn. The other side was in the sun more, so I tossed it. So four or five total, two to camp, one deer shed. But uh, these are cool, that's big. Dude, it's so hard to tell, like hold them up. Yeah, that would have been seven, huh? It's hard to tell if it's even like a set. It's like, it sits so weird. It's gotta be there close. 20 yards, like 10 yards. It's just so weird. Yeah, like those G1s kind of go down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's two chalk sets that were side by side. I glassed mine up and it was just right left. And I was like, boom, baby. But uh, now we're going to build a fire and get some dinner. Not bad for day one, guys, but we got a couple more days in here. Another night of uh, brats and tortillas. But if you watch the recent shed tour videos, hopefully you saw that we've been... We've been upgrading our dinners with some chili. Takes it to a whole new level. So we got, what's this one? Hormel chili. It said it was for chili dogs. We got two flavors. One's with cheddar cheese and one without. Uh, with American cheese. So that's what we got. We're gonna throw it together real quick and I'll show you the secret sauce. The first couple are really runny, and then the next couple are, you get all the thick stuff. It is a mess. Extra calories, extra flavor. Look at the goods. <laughs> it looks like poverty, huh? <laughs> Tastes better though. <laughs> Guys, we, there's freeze dried meals, and we have some of those, but I don't know why. Just a hot dog on a tortilla, to me, is better. Looks like something you'd buy at Taco Bell and then have an upset stomach tomorrow. Mmm. <laughs> Good? Mm-hmm. Heck yeah, dude. There's my dog. Dude, what are we doing? Oh, man. Just got up. We had a... Uh, it sounds like both of us had probably our best <laughs> night of sleep out here all season. I've been doing some physical therapy with my bands. Get my shoulder warmed up. I did some body weight squats, get my legs warmed up. I guess I am starting to feel 40. Loading up some food for the day. It's only 6.30 a.m., guys. We have all day, so that's probably 12 hours of shed hunting. Uh, I think I really expect both of us to bring three to five back to camp. And I think that's very doable. And I think with that, we'll have a fat stack at camp. But it's all day, so. I'm stoked, I know Braden's stoked. We just need a little time to warm up, get our bodies going, but we got some sunshine hitting on these high peaks and we're gonna start working those south facing slopes. See what we can find. We are just about to split up at 7.03 a.m. And we've each studied Onyx really, really well. And what we try to do today is work as a team. So Braden's taking the left fork of this canyon. I'm gonna hike up this rocky spine that way he can kind of see the shady side of the ridge I'm on and I can see the sunny side of the ridge he's on. And as we go up, it really winds and it starts to cut into these little draws. And Braden's gonna spend some time uh, focusing on the first two. I'm gonna focus on the next two. Uh, we should have radio connection the whole time. So I think it's gonna make for not only a fun day, but a fun video for you guys. Uh, here we go, the unknown. We've been thinking about this for a while and the only way to find out is to get up here and lay down some boot tracks and use the glass when we can. But I'm headed to the sun right there, man. Good luck, Braden. Keep those yeah. cameras rolling. Find them all. Yeah, get your radio on if you don't have it on. And let's have some fun, guys. This is gonna be a killer day. So yeah, 
yesterday when I told you guys I thought that brown antler was like a cattail looking weed. This is what I meant. These dang things. But yeah, that was a tough spot. I, I could have easily walked by that. There's a lot of them out here. All sizes. Some are tall. This one's really tall. Some are short. But that's what I was talking about when I found that brown. Really had to do a double take on that one. But starting off slow. Nothing for Braden and myself. I think I just glassed like an old elk antler over there. Didn't look worth crossing the canyon for. So I'm going to carry on up the finger. Same one I started on. And until I find sign, I'm not really going to slow down. Well, well, they do exist up here. Holy cow, what a slow morning, guys. 9.02, two hours in. And I do think I glassed an elk shed. I just know it wasn't anything special, but I just spotted the first good elk shed. Looks a little chalky, but uh, we're on the board, baby. Yeah, it's buried, but... It's not that bad a condition. Sweet, nice mature bull. Six point. Yeah, let's dig that up and do a pickup. That's definitely something we'll pack out. Man, a little old, but Still dense on this backside, but it has seen some better days. <laughs> That's a nice bull. We uh, just keep saying, like, what's it gonna take to get into a pocket where bulls, big mature bulls like this, shed their antlers? If we can just figure out where some hung out, pop off a couple browns, I think we can get into them. But I think there's nice mature bulls like this down in here, obviously. It's just a matter of pinpointing where they shed this year. I don't think a lot of bulls are in these slopes, but I think there's some quality bulls if you can find them. So we'll call it a keeper for now. I've left better quality antlers out there before, but trying to reach a goal and you can see this backside still pretty dense. That would, that would make a nice split dog chew. I've been hiking for so long haven't found anything until i finally start heading back towards my pack <sighs> and i found one i'm super happy i finally found one it feels good honestly kind of like a raggy-ish five super old they're in here though and my pack is just this way that's an awesome sign there's at least some horns yeah that thing's old and crusty but we'll take it i'm hoping i can get into the zone Another hour or so into this and getting into some really natural habitat. I kind of been in and out of some burns that haven't been my favorite. And I thought, you know what, I should go to the creek bottom and drop my pack and maybe do some loops because there's just enough sign. And I look down below me and there's this coos buck right down here in this bottom. Looks brown, looks pretty nice. Here we go. Gonna have to bust that sucker off, but dang nice buck. Wide. There we go. That'll make a nice little goose buck European mountain. Braden can clean that up, but I have. Oh. You got brain matter. <laughs> That stinks. Came out of that. Yeah, that's his brain. Woo! That's bad. Sweet buck. We'll uh, count it. Just got over the top of this thing after sitting there taking a break. And we got us a shed right there. Nothing big, but it's a shed. And yeah, it's not in bad shape at all. Just a sweet little five point. It feels good that there's horns in here though. Yeah, nothing special. But it is not too old. So that's what makes me happy. Just a sweet little fiver. 
and we're just getting into the zone that I think Eric was supposed to hike, but he ended up switching canyons back to where he found his ground, so. Can't tell how old it is. Let's go check it out on the left side. Well, there's definitely antlers to be found in here, but it's not like you're going to come in here and completely stack them up. Uh, got a rock on top of it. Just bacon in the sun. Hopefully that backside's not bad. Heavy, heavy right here again. I wonder if it's another year of this bull. We got some elk tracks going right by it. Chalk. Guys, you know me. I usually don't mess with this stuff. Looks like this has been flipped over at some point too. Huh. Update real quick, guys. I ran to the I ran out of canyon, ended making it right to the top. And which kind of put me where I left off yesterday. So this is a big canyon. I found my brown in it. It was a long ways down. The white set that I glassed up, it's a long ways down. And I just pulled off of here and glassed up two white elk antlers. So I'm pretty stoked. I'm happy I came over here. I'm gonna work this side for a while, which will just continue to give me vantage across the way. And hopefully we get three or four sheds glassed up over there. And then on the way back, we can scoop them. The one I just glassed looks like a nice, nice one and it's really bright white and I'm hoping it's in good condition. The other one kind of has some gray pink tone to it but it looks like a decent one. So they're straight across, there's water at the bottom. So I'll probably stay on this side as long as I have water and then when I need to get water, I'll drop to the bottom and we'll go scoop those. But glass and paid off, man. I love these big canyons. I was reading it wrong. All right, so we got Two left. And this one, unfortunately, is chalky. Dang. It's hot over here. This hill would have been the zone five, six years ago, dang it. I don't know, guys. I think we'll leave that one. The other one's the left side, and it's for sure right above me about 150 yards but that is that's bad having a hard time finding the sheds i glassed these ones took me a minute i can tell there was something going on between the brush and it is a side-by-side -side set but chalked out it's got a kicker what the heck so old. Can't we find Brown Town? I found a chalk on the way over here. About the age of these ones, so. That's one, two, three, four, five, six antlers on this side. All of them. But the one left that I kind of thought was looking pretty good, I have I finally found, and they're just all old. I'm talking old, like these bulls. Well, they don't come here no more? Where'd you go, buddy? Man, that took me a minute to find these. I glassed them through this brush, but man, they were tough to find. Well, this one took me forever and it took some teamwork. I got Braden on the radio and he had to guide me in. I walked two lines right by this thing and I was saying it before and I'll say it again. This ridge would have been killer five or six years ago, whatever year these are all from. I swear they're all from the same year. <laughs> Look at that. These are the kind of sheds that we just want to find brown, but I can't pack that, guys. It's, I mean, the stuff on my back ain't much better, but that one's heavy. Why can't we find a pocket of browns like this?
finally on the board. I got some water, headed up the face that I told you guys about, and I found me a little six point. It doesn't look super old, so that makes me happy. Yeah, it doesn't look crazy old. That's awesome. Yeah. Jeez. I'll still take it. I might as well, I guess. Until I replace it, hopefully. Time check and update. We're, I'm eight and a half miles and Braden is like over nine miles in. It's 5 p.m. And it's pretty much confirmed by what we've both found that we're not in Brown Town. <laughs> no. We're in Chalk City, so welcome. We just met up down here at the creek bottom and we're just gonna head to camp and most likely call it a day. Unless there's a little bit of daylight, we might poke around camp, maybe go up on the ridge. It's What a push. Right before the sun goes down, we got the last little bit of sunlight on camp. We've got two elk sheds to add to the stack. One coos, whoa, kind of bounced off. One stinky deadhead. And uh, two chalk. Dang, imagine if we brought all other 10 I found and the other three or four that Rain found. We'd have a heaping pile of 50 cents per pound chalk. <laughs> I think they're up actually, two, 250 a pound. Oh, we were planning to have a full day tomorrow. It's not looking good. So most likely would be half, half day tomorrow. But that's our collection so far. Dude, I slept so good. We went to bed at nine. I slept all the way through to three. Uh, I had to wake up to pee. And now it's seven, so. Yeah, we got plenty of rest, man. How'd you sleep? Yeah, I slept better yesterday. Really? Yeah. It was cold. Uh, like, it, like, I kinda woke up probably like 5.30 right when I was breaking first light and it was chilly it's still pretty chilly down on this creek bottom but man it feels good we got half a day we're gonna go see if we can uh maybe pick some up over on this canyon right here and then we're gonna pack out um we plan to have a full day today but we're not in brown town so we're gonna cut our losses and move on i finally hit some fresh elk sign right back there and then I happened to look up. We got us a little dink chalker. It's something though. Dang, that thing is really old. Uh, that's borderline, even me not even gonna pack it. Oh my heck. Yeah, I don't even know if I'm gonna take that one. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I've been walking forever. And I just found this crazy looking thing. Oh, why can't we find that new? Look at the mass. <laughs> what even is that? Jeez. Why well, is it gotta be so old? I'm gonna have to leave that thing, sadly. But that's a cool horn.
got everything packed up and loaded up. Broke down camp. Yeah, it's kind of midday. I guess we could have spent more time out there today, but we just, we weren't in the zone. So we're cutting our loss. We're gonna head out. Here's my pack. We've got four elk sheds, a dead head, and a coo shed. So say we counted it for numbers, it'd be four, five, six, seven. So I did not hit my goal of packing out 10 antlers. I found well over 10, but most of the stuff I just didn't want to pack out. It was starting to crumble and fall apart. These ones here, they're at least in decent shape. I might be able to get a dog chew or two out of those. Um, but Bray and I are going to hit the river and we're going to clean up and get some uh, river water. I've already got it on my shirt. Get some river water on our face, try to cool down a little bit for this long pack out. Should be about two and a half, three hours to get back to the truck. Another great episode. Just uh, check boxing each little canyon, guys. But we're moving on to the next.